Hey, so what's going on guys? Welcome back to episode two in the Mugen SI series. Uh, as you guys know, I bought this car used. There's no real way of buying it new at this point. So whenever you buy a used car, I always recommend just changing out all the fluids, making sure the spark plugs are uh, new and just going through and making sure that the car is all uh, up to standard to drive. Um, so in this video, I'm gonna be changing the oil. Um, so I'll walk you through how to do that. All right, so let's get right into it. Let's get into changing this oil. So as I said, good rule of thumb, whenever you buy a used car, just go through, change all the fluids. It's just for peace of mind. Fluids are cheap, engines are expensive. Same with transmission. So go ahead, spend the few extra bucks that you did on top of your car and change your oils and fluids just for that peace of mind. So let's get right into it and the tools I'm using to change the oil. I'm um, starting off with funnels. So I got two funnels over here. I use one for filling the engine and then I use this one to fill the oil filter so I don't run the engine dry when I first start it up. I got a torque wrench. Again, this is something that you guys might not need. Um, it's a little overkill, but I like to just tighten it up to factory specs, which is 29 foot pounds. Um, I got a ratchet over here um, and then just an extension, 17 millimeter socket, some gloves, oil filter removal socket. Um, these are in two different sizes. I'm just gonna pick which one fits best. But uh, for the oil filters that Honda's use, it's 14 flute, it says Toyota, but Honda uses the same. New crush washer, microfiber towel. I'm using a genuine Honda filter. Um, there's the part number. You can go with aftermarket, it's all personal preference, but I like to use the Honda ones. And then new engine oil. Uh, this is 5w30 that's what my car requires i'm using ames oil again this is all personal preference that you want um, i like ames oil because uh just i've had good experiences with it and then you'll need a jack and jack stands and then a pan to catch the old fluid all right so let's start uh lifting this car up and get this oil change done with so the first thing I usually do when I look at uh, changing my oil, I usually like to see what the old oil looks like and whether or not I'm leaking fluid or where I currently stand. So let's pop the hood and let's see uh, where we currently stand on oil for the car right now. Um, it's gonna be a little hard doing this with one hand, so just bear with me. All right, so there's the engine. A um, few things, engine oil caps usually always say what fluid goes in your car. Make sure you follow this. A lot of people, they like to run different types of oils. Again, uh, you shouldn't be doing that. It's what the manufacturer recommends. This is what they made the engine for. So always do that. Another thing when changing oil, um, I like to do it on like a car that's not super hot and not super cold. So usually what I do is I drive the car uh, for maybe 15, 30 minutes, and then I'll go through and I'll let the car cool down for another 15 minutes. And the reason I start it up and warm it is just so the oil flows out better. Um, and then I let it cool down so I don't burn myself on any of the parts. So let's go through, check what the oil looks like right now. And this is why I say always change your oil when you buy a used car. So let me see if I could lay this down over here somewhere. time over here but this seems like a good location so let's pull this out let's see what the oil looks like currently and there you go you could see that the oil it's not terrible but again I don't know when this oil was changed it could be a recent change it could be super old so let's go in change this oil All right, so let's start jacking the car up. Uh, so what you wanna do is you wanna take your jack stands, one on each side. A lot of people, they like to use ramps and drive their cars up onto the ramp. I have a pair of ramps, but this car, because it's lowered and the lip, I'm unable to put it on ramps because it's starting to scrape. Again, I don't really care about this lip because it's already all beaten up. I'm probably gonna get it painted. Um, and the color is a little off. I don't know if you guys can catch that on camera, but again, I don't want to crack the lip because that's just going to cost me more money to get it repaired. So I'm just going to jack it up. It's a little more annoying, but it's it's the same thing at the end of the day. So let's go underneath. I'll show you where you guys can start jacking this car up. So this is the subframe over here. 
Um, there's a jacking point right in the middle, and that's where you want to put your jack and lift this vehicle up from. So let me go and lift this up, and then I'll put the car down on jack stands. All right, so I got the car all jacked up. It's on jack stands. I have enough room to get down underneath. Now, one of the things that I do want to emphasize, whenever you lift your car, always give it a good shakedown. Make sure that it's sturdy on the jacks. Um, you don't hear anything moving, because again, the last thing you want when you're under a car is 3,000 pounds smashing down on your face. So, a little word of advice there. Uh, now let's get into it. Let's start draining the oil. All right, so I'm under the car, and the joys of working on these smaller Hondas. The oil filter is over here, right behind the passenger axle. It does seem like I have an oil leak somewhere. I'll take care of that later. But the oil filter is all the way back there. So I think the easiest way of getting that will be taking this tire off and just going through from the side over here, just so I have a little bit more leverage. The engine oil filter, there's a sign right here, engine oil. So I'll just remove this nut. But whenever I do oil changes, I always make sure I'm able to remove the oil filter first. Just because if you're unable to get that off and then you drain your fluid, you're gonna be in trouble. So let me uh, get my impact, remove this tire and start draining the, making sure I can get this filter off. All right, so out of all my Hondas, this is gonna be the most joyful to uh, change the oil. So let's start off by removing the wheel, um, just so I have a little more space to work. Um, so I got my impact over here, 19 millimeter impact socket, and we'll remove these. All right, so here's a little trick. I removed the, the lug nuts. Um, the wheel's kind of stuck. I know that the car is pretty sturdy on these. Whenever you have the wheel stuck and you can see due to the rust, it's kind of like rust welded itself onto the hub. Just give it a good kick. And it should come right off like you can see right there and you can see there's a lot of rust over here so i am going to be changing the brakes in another episode um, and uh, i'll show you guys how to take care of all this all right here you have it guys i'm uh, removing this but again there's not much room to work so let's just slowly twisting this off until we can get it off uh what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go grab my oil my uh my oil pan just so when I have this off, it's gonna leak and I just want it to go on uh, in the pan, not on my driveway. All right guys, so I got the oil filter loose. One thing that I didn't wanna show is now that I have it loose, I could just spin it off by my hand. Um, so I'm just gonna leave that for now. What I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna see if I could remove the engine oil um, drain plug. Cause again, like I said, you don't want to remove either or these if one of them is seized on um, because you're going to have no oil in your engine and you're just going to be leaking oil and you won't be able to move your car after that. So let me go ahead, see if I can remove that and then I'll start draining the oil. All right, so still underneath the engine, I was able to make sure that this is loose. It says engine oil, so we're safe to zoom. Make sure you got your uh, catch pan ready because whenever you loosen this, it's just going to spew out. Um, and you can see what I mean by that. So make sure it's ready. You don't want to spill this stuff over your driveway. It's super slick. And you're going to have to clean up a pretty big mess. So let's drain this. And there you go. You can see how black this fluid is. It, it, I don't know when this was changed. I'm glad I'm doing this. I've driven the car from Ohio um, here to New Jersey, which was about 500 miles on this fluid um so it's good that i'm doing this now this doesn't seem to be the genuine honda drain plug um, this seems to have a magnet at the bottom which is pretty good because this way um, it catches all the sediments from the engine one thing i forgot to do is whenever you drain your oil you do want to open up the cap over here and that helps it drain more freely so let me take care of that and that will help the engine drain faster. All right, so always keep microfiber towels handy. Again, these are microfiber towels that I've used for detailing and I'm just throwing them away at this point. And you're gonna wanna clean your drain plug. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit it with a brake parts cleaner and that should make it really nice and clean. And we're, we're gonna let the oil drain out. It's still draining. Um, so usually what I like to do is I just like to let the car sit 
for maybe like 20 minutes. Just make sure all the oil is out. So we'll do that. We'll work on other things in the meantime. Again, this all cleaned up. Um, there was a lot of gunk on it. So I am glad that I did change this. Um, you can see that that oil is really black. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to drain the oil filter and make sure I get that in there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my brake parts cleaner. Just hit the plug real quick. Just make sure it's all clean and stuff. And then that way when I put it in the engine there's no old oil on it. While I'm going in and cleaning everything, I'm just going to give all these areas a little clean. Make sure that I get all the gunk out. Um, you don't want any, any of that going into your engine. Um, while you're here, what I would do is I would clean the engine oil cover up. Um, this seems like it's really dirty. So I'm going to hit this as well. Uh, I think I could hit this with brake clean. If there was a rubber gasket around here, I wouldn't hit it with brake clean because that dries out rubber. So I'm just going to clean this up as well. And the same thing with this area over here. So as you can see, the oil is still dripping in. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to remove the oil filter and let that drain out as well. Uh, so again, this is going to be similar to the engine oil. It won't be as much, but we'll still want to catch all that. Now this is actually a pretty bad design because when I remove that, it's going to go all over my axle. Um, and again, guys, if I'm doing this wrong, just let me know so I know better for the next time. So let me go ahead, remove this oil filter, and you can see it's already dripping. Always catch this stuff. It makes a mess. And again, you can see the oil is dripping on my subframe. So these engineers at Honda, they, they make some great cars, but they're not always the best in terms of serviceability. So let me continue pulling that out. Doesn't seem like much more is left in there. Um, there's gonna be oil in the filter housing, uh, which will obviously drain out as well. Um, there we go. So I've gotten the oil filter out now. Um, again, this is a pain, man. So there we go, that's the oil filter. Always make sure you got your gasket off. Um, and you can see there is some more oil in there. Always make sure the gasket comes off of the actual case area because you don't want that stuck in double gasketing an old filter. So let's get that out. I'm glad I'm removing this. This is not the genuine Honda filter. Um, it says Federal, so I'm guessing this is just like some cheap um, store shelf product. All right, guys, while the engine's draining, um, I'm just going to do some work over here. Got the drain bolt all cleaned up. I'm just going to put a new crush washer on it. Um, so that's ready. I know I said that I'm going to fill this oil filter up with oil, but the way that it's faced on the car, it's sideways. So whatever I'm going to put in here is probably going to spill out. So what I want to do is I'm going to take some of the new oil. I'm just going to put oil around this gasket. And the reason we do that is when we take this off, it's going to make it much easier for the oil filter to come off. Um, so let's do that. Put your finger in there and get some new oil and just lightly grease uh, or oil this gasket. Um, you know, I might actually put a little bit of oil inside the filter. Um, I know it sits sideways, so it's kind of like really hard to ensure that oil doesn't uh, escape out. But I'm just going to put a little bit of oil in there just so when I start it up that there's no oil not at the bottom of the engine. So now that I got this all lubed up, I'm going to just put a little bit of oil in there and then I'm um, just going to start pouring uh, this in here. That should be good. I don't, I don't want to put too much. Um, these are filters, so they usually just absorb the oil that's inside. And you can see, uh, let's see, there's a little bit of oil I put in and then once I turn it around, all that oil is kind of like gone. It's absorbed into the filter. So let me go ahead, put this one on, then we'll put the drain bolt back on and we're ready to pour some fresh oil in. All right, so I'm gonna go in here and hand tighten this, put this on to the housing. Um, so the idea here is just hand tighten it. Uh, once you get 
get the bolt on. You can turn it about another quarter of a quarter of a turn. Again, this is a pain. That's where this oil filter housing is. All right, so seems like I got it on there. Hand tighten. A lot of people they they tighten tighten it back up with the uh, with the uh, tools. Again, that makes it so hard to take off when you're ready for your next oil change. I just always hand tighten it. All right, so now that the oil is all drained, we're gonna go back in. I'm gonna put this drain bolt back in. I'm actually gonna clean that off with a rag real quick, um, just so it's not contacting any grit or any dirty oil. So let's go ahead, give that a really good clean right there. Um, let's make sure that's all clean. I'm gonna go ahead, put this oil drain bolt back in. Um, again, I want to get this hand tightened. Um, and then obviously I'm going to torque it down to 29 foot pounds. Uh, so it's going in, but it's a little gritty. So maybe I'll clean the inside of the area a little bit. Let me take care of that off camera. All right. So what I've done now is I've hand tightened it, the bolts in. I'm going to take my torque wrench. I've set it at 29 foot pounds. I'm just going to get it on here. I'm going to tighten it, make sure it's at 29 and then we'll, uh, start filling the oil all right so all the work under the car is done i've hand tightened the oil filter that's in there i've torqued down the oil drain bolt to 29 foot pounds that's ready there what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to pull this old oil out and god you can see how dirty this is jesus so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the wheel back on i'm going to take the car off of the jacks i'm going to lower it make sure it's level and then i'm going to start filling the oil so let's do that. All right, so I've drained the oil, I've lowered the car. Let's go ahead and uh, fill her up. Um, so again, I'm using the Ames oil, 5W30. That's what this car requires. Um, this car takes 4.7 liters. So I'm gonna go ahead, fill her up. All right guys, so I fill her up the oil. I'm just gonna start the car, let it idle for about 30 seconds, and then I'm gonna turn it off and check the oil again, make sure that it is full on the dipstick. All right, so as you can see, uh, the oil is filled. It's right in the middle between the two dots. That's exactly where we want it. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and drain all this old oil, put it in, uh, put it in there, and then uh, go drop it off. Guys, I cannot begin to tell you how happy I am that I changed the oil in this. I can already, I don't know if it's placebo, but I can already feel the engine is much smoother. And again, like, even if it's placebo, it's just peace of mind knowing that I've changed the oil in the car. As far as I know, the previous owner said he had the car sitting for about two years. He wasn't really driving it as he had a different um, daily. So the oil could have been two years old, 
Now granted, even if the oil didn't have that many miles on it, it's still two year old oil. And the fact that I drove this car about 500 miles on that old oil, I didn't really have a choice at that time. I kind of just needed to make it back. But it's now just peace of mind. The engine seems like it's just a lot smoother. Ames Oil is obviously a great brand of oil. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start changing all the fluids in this car. I think I'm gonna do a video next on the transmission fluid. Um, yeah, the car, it even pulls faster, I feel like. Maybe it's just all placebo in my head, but I'm just glad the oil's changed. It's peace of mind. And, um, you know, it's just something that if you love your car and you want to take care of your car and you want it to have a long life, you change the oil. So I guess with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.